The Untold Truth of Savannah Guthrie Savannah Guthrie became co-anchor of NBC's Today Show in July 2012. Since then, she's helped keep the morning show at the top of the ratings in the critical 2554 age group demo, which drives the most lucrative ad rates. While Guthrie sometimes reveals tidbits about herself on the show, she generally keeps it professional, preferring to probe her interview subjects' personal lives rather than revealing her own. So let's turn the tables on her and dive into the untold truth of this popular member of the press. She was born in Australia. Though she grew up in Arizona, Guthrie was born in Melbourne, Australia. Her family moved down under when her dad, Charles, was transferred there for his job, but they were back stateside by the time Guthrie was two years old. I have no memory of it because I was too young, but growing up and knowing that I was born in Australia was always this interesting exotic part of my history that I love, Guthrie told people. In May 2015, she returned to her birthplace for the first time as part of today's Mother's Day programming. Alongside her mom, Nancy Guthrie, Savannah took in the sights of the country but also went on an emotional trip down memory lane, visiting her childhood home as well as Melbourne's Sandringham Hospital, where she was born. I think seeing the very place you were born is not something most people get to do or see, Savannah said. To get to go back with my mom, it's just really special. She's terrified of frogs. Savannah Guthrie's unusual phobia first revealed itself in a 2011 Today Show segment featuring a country fair. The footage included a pretty innocent-looking bullfrog hopping around while Guthrie guard in fear, pleading with Al Roker not to let it get near her. According to Wolf Post, she later bravely participated in a game of frog jumping, although she still refused to touch an amphibian, instead spraying it with water to get it to move. A few years later, talk show host and prankster Ellen DeGeneres took full advantage of Guthrie's frog fright by tossing a fake but extremely realistic-looking frog into her lap and then chasing her around the stage with it. It's not real, so this is a way to get over it, DeGeneres said. Well, that worked, obviously, Guthrie sarcastically replied. She's a lawyer. It's fairly well known that Guthrie is a lawyer. After all, she still holds the title of NBC News chief legal correspondent. What's lesser known is the fact that Guthrie absolutely crushed it in law school, earning her Juris Doctor from Georgetown University Law Center, where she graduated magna cum laude, according to a week. She also aced the Arizona bar exam, receiving the top score when she passed it in 2002. Guthrie's interest in law actually came after her start in broadcast journalism. According to an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, she had already been working at local affiliate TV stations in places like Butte, Mont, and Tucson, Aries. When she was inspired to apply to law school by watching the Simpson and Menendez brothers' trials on court TV, she then worked for a few years at a white shoe D. C. Firm before getting back in front of a camera for Court TV, then eventually NBC News in 2007, where she's worked ever since. Her first marriage only lasted four years. As of this writing, Guthrie is married to consultant and PR guru Michael Feldman. They wed in March 2014 and have two children together, a three-year-old daughter, Vale Guthrie Feldman, and an 11-month-old son, Charles Max Feldman. Guthrie was previously married to BBC News producer Mark Orchard until, according to Radar Online, their marriage ended as dubiously as it began. A National Enquirer story alleged Guthrie came between Orchard and his first wife, reporter Anne Karen Bloot, of the New York Times. Radar reported that Guthrie and Orchard's 2005 marriage began to unravel relatively quickly, citing divorce documents that stated they were living apart in Washington, D.C. by August 2008. The Hollywood Reporter said the split took place when Guthrie was working long, stressful hours as a White House correspondent for NBC News. 
Perhaps the drama surrounding her first marriage was the reason Guthrie and Feldman decided to keep their wedding and first pregnancy a secret until after they walked down the aisle. Her on-air chemistry with Matt Law wasn't an act. On off. 29, 2017, Guthrie had to announce colleague Matt Laurie's termination from today due to inappropriate sexual behavior. Having only learned about his firing just hours before, Guthrie was clearly distraught about the situation. I'm heartbroken for Matt. He is my dear, dear friend and my partner, and he is beloved by many, many people here, she said, adding, how do you reconcile your love for someone with the revelation that they have behaved badly? I don't know the answer to that. That's not the first time Guthrie has been candid about her affection for law. In fact, she surprised him on his 20th anniversary with Today by popping into the show, even though she was on maternity leave at the time. When a shock law said he couldn't believe she came in, Guthrie said, Via people, I just want to say, we adore you. One of the things that is so wonderful about you is that from the second I walked in here, one of the things I noticed is that Matt knows every single person's first name and last name. He knows the name of their dog. He knows how their mother is doing. Guthrie also tweeted about Law that day, calling him a class act, great friend, and once in a generation talent. Those feelings are mutual. In a 2014 interview with Variety, Law said Guthrie directly contributed to him re-signing his Today contract. I love working with her, he gushed. I am having a good time. I love the direction the show is taking. She's a devout Christian. Guthrie shared in a 2017 profile for the New York Times that she is a practicing Christian who regularly attends Sunday service at Trinity Grace, a non-denominational church in Manhattan. It's a casual church and I can go in jeans or a simple dress, she said, adding, Michael is Jewish and usually doesn't come with us so I take Charlie and Fail, the Renard double stroller. The service is about an hour and a half. Vale sits with me in the beginning when the songs are going on and then goes to Sunday school. Guthrie previously discussed her faith in a book for guideposts, writing, At 42, I'd been waiting my whole life to have a baby. Every time I woke in the night for a feeding or heard Vale sign her sleep, I felt a fresh rush of gratitude for this incredible blessing from God. She also revealed that throughout the early, uneasy years of her career, she turned to the Bible, copying passages that particularly spoke to her into a notebook for future reference. She eventually filled three notebooks, but came to rely on a particular passage in times of stress. Psalm 62, 8, became my watchword, trust in him at all times. Pour out your hearts to him, Guthrie wrote. I certainly did. I turned my loneliness, my frustration, my mistakes over to God and told myself to be patient. She cut her second maternity leave short for today. Though it was announced that she would return from her 2017 maternity leave on March 3rd, Guthrie returned to the Today couch four days early, according to page 6. Though she said she was delighted to be back, Guthrie also said, Yesterday, I admit, I got a little weepy, because it's a transition. It's the end of an era, apparently referencing her nearly three month sabbatical after giving birth to her son. As for why she cut her leave a little short? Page 6 said today producers begged Guthrie to return to stave, a for ratings slide they believed was triggered by her absence. They needed Savannah to bail them out, so they rushed her from maternity leave. NBC claimed it was because of the influx of news, but the reality is that the show was down double digits and they needed her, a source told the tabloid. It was a surprising move for Guthrie to bend to the supposed whims of the Today Show brass, considering her feelings towards her first maternity leave, which she blogged about in 2014. 
The biggest surprise for me from maternity leave is how completely and totally I've been able to just check out and be consumed by this little baby and by family and what's happening at home, she wrote. It's amazing and kind of transforming to give your mind and your heart and your soul a break from the crazy, busy world and just be focused on something that's so simple and true and from the heart. It's just been magical. She's a diehard Philadelphia Eagles fan. Though she was raised in Arizona, Guthrie and her entire family unabashedly root for the Philadelphia Eagles every Sunday during the NFL season. They even wear custom jerseys when cheering on the birds, like any respectable member of Eagle Nation would. The source of the rabid fandom seems to stem from Guthrie's husband. She once blogged, Mike insists that Vale wear her Eagles jersey for every Eagles football game. One time I didn't put it on. The Eagles lost. Mike said she will wear that Eagles jersey from here on out. So I don't mess with it. The real question is, how bad does Guthrie hate the Cowboys? She didn't get invited to the prom. During a Today segment via Twitter that featured the team sharing throwback prom photos, Guthrie had to share a picture from her ninth grade winter dance instead. She said she was never invited to her prom. The show hosts shared their photos as part of a discussion about an Illinois high school that decided to institute a prom lottery in which students were randomly assigned dates. Both Guthrie and Carson Daly who also did not attend his prom thought the lottery idea was great. Guthrie still feels some kind of way about her big dance snub. Once you're there it's not like you're locked to that person, you can mix and mingle but I like that it involves everyone, she said, adding, again, not asked to prom, so I think it's explained. Um, poor Savannah. She lost her father at a young age. During a 2016 Hollywood Reporter interview, Guthrie revealed that her father died of a heart attack while in Mexico on a scouting trip as part of his job as a mining engineer. She was a teenager at the time. When you are 16, you think you are so grown up, but the first thing I thought was, we still need him, Guthrie said of the tragedy. Her faith helped guide her through the loss. In her blog for guideposts, she wrote, To me, at 16, it felt like a betrayal of everything I'd believed in. How could God let this happen to my dad, a good man who was only in his 40s? How could he do this to our family? Her anguish gradually led to acceptance. Somehow, God comforted me, she wrote. And there were blessings amid the grief. Mom found a job in public affairs at the University of Arizona, which made tuition more affordable for my sister and me. Both of us lived at home during our college years. We arranged our weekend plans so there was always one of us home, with mom. Her sister is a poet. Guthrie has two siblings. A brother, Cameron Guthrie, who is a pilot in the Air National Guard, and a sister, Annie Guthrie, who is a poet, as well as a teacher and marketing director at the University of Arizona Poetry Center. In 2014, Annie recited a poem she wrote for Savannah at her wedding, reported People. In 2015, Savannah supported her sister's craft in a big way by proudly hosted a party to celebrate Annie's first book of poetry, The Good Dark, which took her 15 years to write. I'm excited for the world to get a taste of the sister I know and grew up with in our little Brady Bunch family, Savannah told People. Annie was always writing, always so interesting and deep and thoughtful. She added, in college, we would take some of the same classes like a humanities course and Annie would read the same book twice because she was so interested and devoted and I would barely read it at all. Savannah's kids will have to wait a while to get acquainted with their aunt's work as it explores some complex territory. The book might be a little complicated for Vale right now, but when she's 25, she may be ready, Savannah joked.